walking through red lights and not really paying attention. I'll show you what's going on in a moment here. Um, this place started getting kind of run down and people weren't coming down here as much, but um, let's see there. There is places with traditional food out on the sidewalk down there with uh, dried beans and mushrooms and seafood. This place sells traditional tea and ginseng. Um, the city introduced a bylaw, or kind of an exception to our bylaws down here recently that um, at certain hours you don't have to pay for parking at the meters, mm -hmm. which is hoping to bring more people into oh, Chinatown to revive it a bit. Mm -hmm. It's a recent kind of exception to the city's. And in terms of percentage of population, Yeah, we've got tw we've got 21 cities in Metro Vancouver, each with its own city government, with the mayor. Combined population of about three million in Metro Vancouver. Vancouver City pop proper has about 700,000 people, and uh, just these are slightly more than what you'd hear in the tourism industry. But people aren't keeping up with, with the growth of Vancouver when they specify their numbers. Yeah. Better to go by the Government of Canada Census website, mm -hmm. which currently. Uh, um, we've always kind of known that Vancouver's population is about, Metro Vancouver is about half yeah. Asian. So maybe close to a million and a half of Vancouver's three million is uh, is Asian. And about 19% of it is Chinese. Why? Yeah. <clears throat> Why is it growing so much? Uh, it's a very in-demand city. There's a whole bunch of things that people really kind of think of Vancouver as being the place to live. So we've got this fantastic location close to the mountains and the ocean multicultural diversity, a strong economy, and all kinds of um, things to do here. The film industry is big here. Mm. Um, mild weather, a whole bunch of different reasons why people like Vancouver. When you say strong economy, what's, what's, what's fueling that? A whole bunch of things. So we got the film industry here, we got tourism and hospitality, the tech industry, oh, okay. um, construction. There's a, this street now, Hastings Street here. Mm. So this is where all the homeless are. Okay. So this street is right next to Chinatown, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to cross that street if you're going to see Chinatown and Gastown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got to respect the first responders. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I hate to tell you, but to be political, we don't call them homeless anymore. We call them house houseless or yeah, something like that. I exactly. forget what the thing is. It changes all the time. Well, the thing is, the economy is changing. There's a big rental shortage of Van in Vancouver because it's so in demand. So many people want to live here and are always moving here. Oh, really? So it's hard to find a place to rent. And even people that are not homeless, just in lower incomes, are kind of, kind of being forced out on the street because yeah. maybe they don't want to leave Vancouver. Right? Well, it's, it's hard to leave, but you know. Yeah. So are they, I guess they're trying to build more. What are they building? Um, well, they, actually, they, we are, um, the city is actually making all these uh, homeless uh, places to live for homeless in, uh, out of uh, shipping containers, uh -huh. which is kind of a new program. Uh, shipping, uh, where is that down, is that, are they decentralized for that, or is it just one area? What are they um, the, yeah, actually, they're um, sort of decentralized, so there's some down here, just a few blocks away, actually, behind us, down on the uh, north, or actually, south side. Of, Chinatown, near where Jimi Hendrix's grandmother used to live. Mm -hmm. She used to live down here. He used mm -hmm. to come up here from Seattle to hang out when he was a kid learning how to play guitar. She oh. worked at a restaurant called V's. Mm -hmm. um, they used to serve jazz legends like Nat King Cole, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong. There was a spot called Hogan's Alley where a lot of black, Italian, and Chinese all kind of... Um, everyone got along. It was a really cool, actually, part of town, but kind of changed when that... There was a road put in, going into, from downtown, a big overhead ramp thing. Uh, took out Hogan's Alley. That's it. But uh, some of the shipping containers were over there by where Nora used to work at V's. Yeah. Anyways, we're coming to the gas town now. So this is where Vancouver started. We used to have a mill over here called the Hastings Mill. Yeah. And the salt mill workers had nowhere to go. This was back in about 1858. This man came here from New Westminster, which is older than Vancouver. It's the old capital of British Columbia when it was a separate colony. Vancouver Round became a colony in 1849 in British Columbia, 1858. And so John Dayton came here from New Westminster, the capital of British Columbia back in the old days. And he brought with him a big barrel of whiskey. And he said to the mill workers who had nowhere to go and hang out, there was no construction. It was just home of the Tsleil-Waututh First Nation. And 
beginning of industrial development in the Vancouver area with the Hastings Mill, he said to the hip mill workers, you help me build a saloon. You guys will go and have somewhere to go and hang out after work and have somewhere to go and drink. Maybe we can even start a town. I'll give you as much whiskey as you can drink one night, but you got to help me build the saloon first. They were in a hurry to get their whiskey. They helped him build it in 24 hours. <laughs> it was right there in front of us. About the Great Fire of 1886 burnt it down. It was called the Global Saloon. Mm. <laughs> so this is motivation. Now. People uh -huh. called him. Um, he had it. Sorry, my apologies. He had a reputation for talking a lot, like I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Give people nicknames, so they called it. They gave him a nickname. They called him Gassy Jack. So they named this neighborhood Gassy Town mm -hmm. after it started getting going with other buildings built up around his saloon. Uh, it's not the saloon anymore. The original one was burnt down. That that building though was built right after mm -hmm. the fire in 1886. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the kind of place I like to go visit. Oh, so a bookshop and everything. The mill workers gave him a nickname. They called him Gassy Jack. Mm -hmm. That might mean something else now, but back then it meant talking too much. Uh, oh, yeah. Gassy, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. So they called it Certainly Gassy Town. Familiar to me from, from England. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well. Gas, it's, it's too much talking. It's right, gassy, okay. Much talking. Yeah. Oh, cool. Like, that's, uh, that's good to know this because this was primarily kind of English and Scottish. Yeah in the early days of um, Europeans developing. Um, back east it was more French, out here it was more Scottish and English. So this was, uh, it became Gassy Town and then we just called it Gas Town. In the 1970s it was declared a heritage neighborhood. Oh, they that's put right. down all this brickwork on top of the old original cobblestones. And uh, the original cobblestone work was actually wood and then it was stone. But then in the 70s they put down the brickwork on top of the original cobblestone. Mm -hmm. and these vintage style light standards kind of replicate the look of the old days of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. A couple of these cars going.